So uh, we had a question on zip forms. Um, zip forms is where you're going to go in to write all of your contracts, all of your amendments. Um, basically, if it's a form that you need as a real estate agent and it's provided by Trek, Sabor, uh, TAR, NAR, you're going to find it in zip form. So when you first log in, um, you're going to get taken to a page that's going to look very similar to this. You may not have all of these addresses down at the bottom or even anything down there, but basically these represents each and every uh, paperwork packet that I've created and the associated address for it. So I'm going to go through first thing to show you how to first off create a transaction in zip form. So if you're writing up an offer, um, if you're putting together the packet for a listing, whatever the case may be, you can do it uh, or you can start off by creating a, a transaction. So we're going to come in and we're going to click on new. And it's going to give me the option to do a new listing, new purchase offer, new lease, new lease listing, and quick sign. Honestly, these all kind of take you to the same place. Um, you can just create docs in here. They don't actually link to anything. They don't link to anything in Skyslope. Um, Trek does not get notification when you create one of these. So you can go in and kind of practice creating your contracts in zip forms um, without worrying about breaking anything again. Don't worry about breaking anything with any of the tools that I'm going to teach you how to use. So um, let's go to purchase offer because most of us start off working with buyers. So um, new purchase offer. And then it's going to ask you to list the property address. Um, 118. I'm going to put the address of the house I grew up in. Mostly so that way um, it doesn't affect anybody else's property um, and doesn't reveal too much. So Rolling Green Drive in San Antonio, it's a residential property. Um, and then if you have templates saved, you can go in and select your templates. Um, but from here, you can just come in and click save. It's going to bring up a new window where you can start filling in information. Now, it knows that 118 Rolling Green Drive is San Antonio, Texas, and that this is the zip code. Um, I think our house was built in 1971. Uh, subdivision, you can get that from MLS. In fact, let me see if cool. Let's pull up uh, this one here. So we're going to pretend like I'm writing a purchase offer um, on this house here. So we need the subdivision. We're always going to pull the the legal one. And again, you can verify this in BCAD. Um, I'm not going to worry about that because again, I'm just here to show you how zip forms works, not how to verify the information. Um, lot number, block number, again, you can find that here. Again, you'll want to verify it on BCAD or whatever county appraisal district, um, but it's lot four, block 35. I'm going to go ahead and copy the full legal description because I know I'm going to need it later on. So we're going to come back. Lot four block 35. There's no plot, um, but we do have a legal description. We can also come in and add in the parties to the transaction. So Jones, we can put in an email, bob at bob.com. We can put in phone number 210-555-1212. So let's say we're representing Bob Jones. We can put him in there and that'll, that way it'll auto populate. Um, we can go in and put the seller's name. And that way, anytime there's a seller field, it'll auto populate Sue's name. So we have some information about what we're doing and who the parties to the transaction are. So we can come in and start adding documents. So let's say, again, this is a purchase. Uh, we know that we're going to need the one to four. If they're Financing it, third-party financing addendum. This property is in an HOA. We're going to need those uh, those HOA docs, and this one is. Um, it's in a mandatory HOA. So we can come in and start finding these documents, and it links the uh, zip forms will link directly again to Trek, to NAR, to Sabor, any place that has forms associated with with what you're going to need. So we can come into Add Form. I always recommend coming down and selecting All. And then you type in either the name or if it's a, uh, a Trek form, you can start typing in the number. So um, I know I'm going to need a one to four 
family residential contract and look there it is now i can click it and it becomes part of that packet um, i know that they're going to finance it so we're going to do third party cool third party financing addendum um there's both a, a trek version tar version they're basically the the same document um this one is uh built before 1978 um so i know i'm going to need to see if they have a lead paste paint i also want to see if they have a seller's disclosure they don't have either but let's say that there was a seller's disclosure here you can download the seller's disclosure let me see if i can find uh let's see 215 bundy nope. i'm trying to think of a property that had a seller's disclosure attached and show you how to attach a document when it's not part of the, the Trek website. So for example, seller's disclosure, lead based paint disclosure. So let's say this is the seller's disclosure for the property we're putting the offer on. We come in, we download it. And now we need to attach it here in uh, in zip forms because we want to send this to our client for signature as well. We can come in, add a doc, and instead of going to add form, we can browse for a document. This is also a great way to attach your IABS that you already have pre-filled um, so that way you can just send that PDF over and over and over. So let's see if we can find that seller disclosure. Cool, seller disclosure Waverly. And again, you can continue to add docs that are associated with uh, that property. Again, if we were doing that Waverly, we would do lead-based paint. Um, again, I can attach the documents related to uh, representing them as a client. So the buyer tenant rep, wire fraud, um, those associated business disclosures that we're required to send out um, saying that America, America's home warranty um, gets a little kickback from um, a little kickback from EXP. Uh, let me go back in and re-add it. It's because it's attached to another file. Let's see. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the rest of the forms and then we'll go back in and add in that seller's disclosure. So buyer, tenant, so residential buyer tenant agreement, uh, wire fraud, and everything that you're going to need in terms of forms associated with um, with you know making offers or anything like that are all going to be available there in uh, there in zip forms for you. Uh, let me go through and rename this document. So that way I can attach it as a new document. So add doc, again, because it already exists on my computer, we're gonna go in and we're gonna find it. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it'll let me attach that. Cool. Oh, I did it twice. Okay, let me go ahead and delete that. Um, so we have all the associated docs. Again, that's how you can very easily delete it. So now we have a doc that is filled out but just needs to be sent for, for signature. That's that seller's disclosure. But we also have four documents that need to be filled out. Um, we're starting from scratch. Again, here's that seller's disclosure filled out. And I'll show you how to send everything for signature. Um, I'm just going to do very quickly um, a, a contract for this so you see that the seller's name and the buyer's name were auto-populated because I put them in at the beginning. The property address, the legal description, the lot and block number is all there. So you go through, you you know, put in the numbers. Um, we're going to do third-party financing. Again, I'm not going to fill out everything. I'm just going to go through and fill out um, just a, enough of the info to to send this out. Uh, cool. So we're going to pretend like I filled out all of this information. I filled out the offer based on what my client wants to do. Uh, again, we're not going to go too deep right now into how to fill out a contract. We've got those resources for those on the Mentee website. Um, but again, I just want to kind of show you fill all everything out. 
that you need to, everything that's applicable at that point, and you save it, you go back, it's going to show you all the forms that you've downloaded. Again, you come back in, fill out everything that you need to fill out, come back, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now we're going to fast forward. You've got all of these documents filled out, all the contracts, the addendums, the representations, everything that you need is there. So now you got to get signatures on it. Very easily, you can open up, you can do it one of two ways. You can either open up one of the documents or you can simply come over to eSign. And we're going to come in and, oops, enter. Um, we're going to come in and do a new packet. So let's say we have all of these filled out. We want to send each and every one of them for a signature. Next thing we're going to do is click on next. And it's going to ask us, hey, who do we want to send it to? Uh, let's say we're sending it to our buyer. We're going to send it to Bob Jones. And we're going to click on close. It's going to pop him in there. You can add additional people. So let's say there's part of a doc that you need to sign. And let's say Bob has a wife named Judy Jones. And she's Judy at JudyRules.com. Okay, well, cool. oh, she's already checkmarked. Let's go add her back in. The royal buyer one. Oh, we need to add another another person to it. But anyway, you can go in and create all the parties to it. Click on next. And then it's going to take you to kind of a preview screen of all of the documents uh, that you've attached. And remember, we put check marks next to all those boxes. We'll give it a moment to load up. So now we have the documents in front of us. The nice thing about zip forms is zip forms is very good about recognizing where things need to go. So it knows that on this form, buyer one needs to initial there, and it's going to pop that in there for you. You'll notice we go through all the pages of the one to four residential, all 10 pages. We have um, those initials down at the bottom and so on and so forth. It knows that Bob needs to sign here and pop in that date. And we continue on. Now let's go to that, uh, that seller's disclosure page. That was the one where it was a PDF that was saved on our computer that we uploaded as part of the packet. Now, Zip Forms doesn't intrinsically know that this third party document that was uploaded from my computer versus pulled in from the Trek website. Zip Forms doesn't know what that document is. I can't read the document. It just knows that there's a document attached to it. You can tell Zip Forms where you want initials and who you want to have initial any given document. So we're going to do here, we need to have the buyer initial here. Bob Jones is our buyer. We click on initial and we drag it over. Let's say there was a second person there. Um, it has me as the agent. Let's say I needed to initial here as well. You just change the name. And now you have the space for Bob Jones to initial and the space for Stephanie Stone to initial and so on and so forth. So let's go, let's select Bob because we need Bob to initial here. And we can do this anywhere. Let's say this was a contract where something had been changed and now we just need initials on the change. You could literally drag this to the middle of the page. Uh, if you ever need to delete a, a signature, you can simply click backspace and it'll take that away from you. Um, again, you can continue down. If somebody needs to, to actually write something, um, I use it a lot when we have the uh, buyer tenant rep. I'll just kind of shift down to there, down to the buyer tenant rep where we need their physical address. Um, maybe I don't have that right away but i want them to fill in their address you can do text and it'll give them space to write in whatever they want in that field and whatever they want in that field so there's a lot that you can do um, again anything that they need to fill out um, or actually write in you can do with the text um, if there's anything that they need to sign where it just needs to have um, let's say it needs their their signature and their printed name Kind of like how it appears here. Now it already filled in Bob Jones because we know that Bob Jones is the client's name, so it knew that that's what it what it needs there. Um, but let's say it didn't fill it in, you could simply 
drop that full name and it's going to pop it in there and then again your signature and the date signed there are some other things that you can um, do in there like check boxes and that sort of stuff um, but really just those first four signature initial date signed and name or what you're going to use 99.9 .9 of the time when you're done you can click send and it's going to email to bob jones bob at bob.com i think is what i put in there um, these documents it'll walk him through signing them so here's what i recommend create yourself as a fake buyer or a fake seller or just a fake person with your email address and email yourself some docs so just so that you can see what it looks like from the client side when they have to sign something that you sent to them from zip forms um, so again this would be great practice to write a contract do an amendment or two um, do something that is uploaded from your computer again the easiest thing is that IABS because we all have an, a PDF copy saved on our laptop um, we have it or maybe in a Google Drive so that's a great way to upload a document that would be relevant where you're going to need to do this drag and drop initial and signature um, method here for zip forms and then like I said create yourself as a fake buyer send out these documents just so you can see what that signing process looks like from that client side um, but again all of your documents that you're ever going to need are going to be here in zip forms um, even things like um, like your IABS so information about brokered services. So if you needed to create a new IABS, uh, when we recently had the broker change and we're having one again, um, I'm sure you all saw it at the Tuesday meeting um, and got the email, but let's say you needed to do, to do a new IABS. Um, I can do it right from here. Um, I can do uh, the broker, the uh, supervisor I can pop all of that in and then I can save a copy and I can uh, send it to me as in an email I can save it as a PDF whatever I want to do I can save it to my device however you want to do it so every document that you're gonna need that you're gonna be creating is gonna be here in in zip forms I can't think of a document that I've had to organically create that would be legal for me to use that doesn't exist in in zip forms everything will be here for you um, if you ever aren't sure of the name of a document what i would recommend is start typing and start typing slowly so we know that the when we go to sell a property it's the exclusive right to sell so i'll start with exc because i don't know if it's exclusive right to sell exc L right to sell and here it is right right here ex uh, res lit listing exel dot right to sell so if you if I were to type in I don't get it so feel free to shorten it because it's just going to start populating with anything that has those string of characters so this is a great a great tool to practice on especially for writing your contracts you don't have to print anything out you don't have to download anything from the trek website it's all here for you um, if you have any questions on zip forms let me know there is a great um, help section here on with some vi some videos some guided help as well so if you ever get stuck um, again let me know and i should be able to walk walk you through it um, one thing that you will need with uh, zip forms is your ability to send out for signature i use docusign with the zip forms um your mileage may vary if you don't use docusign unfortunately i don't know too much about i think with zip logic yeah i don't know too much about zip logic because i don't use it um but it should work pretty much the same you it may look a little bit different um so if you use docusign the drag and drop for initials and signatures should look identical to to what i showed you here um, but again let me know if you have any questions on zip forms and again this is a great practice on writing your contracts and sending them out for signatures